So this morning I looked at the uh, front page of the newspaper on the internet and there was a small clip of the eulogy that uh, former President George Bush uh, gave uh, uh, for his father's funeral. And it was so beautiful. And um, I'm so happy that he shared that with the world. Um, uh, what made it so beautiful was that he embraced his vulnerability and um, allowed himself to be seen just as he was feeling. Um, and near the end of the eulogy, he uh, started crying and he just, you know, kept reading this, what he wrote and, you know, finished it. It was just so beautiful. It reminded me of some research that I've read about uh, that uh, Dr. Brene, I think is how you pronounce her first name, Brown, um, she studies uh, human connection and she's a uh, uh, doctor of social work. And so uh, that kind of research, you interview people and uh, they have some software now that you can actually start getting some really good statistics and data on, you know, many, many uh, different kinds of uh, uh, responses that people give. <clears throat> and so um, uh, this human connection that she studies, it's really uh, our ability to empathize, uh, belong, and love. That's kind of what she looks at. And her research has shown that those who have a strong sense of love and belonging believe that they are worthy of love and belonging, which of course makes sense. Huh? Um, the one thing that keeps us out of connection is our fear that we are not worthy of connection. Huh? So her research has shown the shame that men often feel is when they are uh, when they think that they are perceived as weak. And so George Bush yesterday uh, so was willing to let go of who he thought he should be in order to be who he was uh, that moment. He was a child grieving for his father. Um, and he had the courage to be authentic with that. That's why that was so powerful. And shame, <clears throat> which is what we often feel when, um, uh, uh, when we have this... Uh, lack of connection, it is the fear of disconnection. It's the fear that there is something about me that if other people know it or see it, then I won't be worthy of connection. And research has shown that this is universal and uh, the only people who don't experience this shame are those with no capacity for human empathy. So uh, maybe we would think of, uh, you know, the 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 worst of the worst sociopaths, I guess, you know. Dr. Brown researched what people who feel worthy have in common. And what they had in common was a sense of courage, the courage to be imperfect. They had the compassion to be kind to themselves first and then to others. And finally, they had a connection as a result of authenticity. And so, you know, this very much is in line with uh, the B Buddhist worldview in terms of, uh, you know, we know that really we cannot offer compassion to someone else if we haven't uh, figured out and generated that in our own self for ourselves. So it very much, uh, her research, I like her research because it, um, really uh, supports Buddhist worldview, ver Buddhist teaching so very much. Those who feel worthy are, uh, were willing to let go of who they thought they should be in order to be who they were. The other thing that they had in common was that they fully embraced vulnerability. They believed that what made them vul vulnerable made them beautiful. Isn't that nice? Gosh. It's a nice sentence. They didn't talk about vulnerability being comfortable, nor did they talk about it being excruciating. 
They just talked about it being necessary. They talked about the willingness to do something where there are no guarantees. And this is an interesting part here. Although vulnerability is the core of shame and fear and our struggle for worthiness, worthiness, it also appears that it is also the birthplace of joy, of creativity, of belonging, and of love. So often we numb vulnerability when we start feeling vulnerable, we numb ourselves. And that's even though we live in such a vulnerable world. You know, it really doesn't make sense when you think about it. And, you know, from the, I was thinking about the Buddhist view then on this, and, you know, what popped into my mind was uh, the three forms of dukkha, you know, dukkha of mental, physical pain, dukkha of change or impermanence, and then the pervasive dukkha of uh, being born, age, get sick and die. Um, that's very vulnerable, isn't it? <laughs> it's a very vulnerable world. Mm -hmm. And she goes on to say that it doesn't really work to selectively numb emotion, like when we get vulnerable to numb ourselves out, that that doesn't work, because that habit of numbing out then starts affecting all the emotions. Joy, yeah, uh, happiness, love. And so it really doesn't work. And of course then that, numbing those out, then leads to feeling pretty miserable and then looking for some purpose and meaning. And when we start doing that, we get vulnerable. And then maybe we numb out. And then, so we get this circle going. And then what do we do? Often, I think it kind of makes sense then in this world that there is so much distraction. There is so much distraction. We stay busy being distracted. We don't stay connected. We... Um, use things to help us numb out, like alcohol and drugs, shopping, you know, all of those kinds of things. So I really rejoice that former President Bush was able to embra embrace his vulnerability and to show that to the world. You know, that clip the world is seeing today. And all of the men that get to see that, I think that's just so beautiful. And I was thinking back, you know, he, when he was president, there were a lot of things that he did that I was not uh, supportive of at all, I will say. But I always kind of had some kind of a connection with him. And now, seeing this and reading this and understanding the research, I know why. Because he opened up and he was vulnerable. And I felt connected to him, human to human, you know. So um, I rejoice that he showed that. That was a great uh, image of such courage uh, to be so authentic in the mo moment. And then, of course, every person that sees this or was there connected to him with that authentic self, with that open heart. And so may we all uh, embrace uh, practicing our vulnerability and opening. <laughs>